Kyle Shanahan has done an outstanding job with right. He's on his third string quarterback. We take that for granted. Look what he's got going for him. Tries to stay undefeated in the division. 49ers won the toss and they'll be kicking off to the Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury, you see both coaches as people around the league remembering and hoping and rooting for the constant recovery of Mr. Hamlin. And that's why you see the three. Back to receive Farrow Cooper. Robbie Gold gets it going. Cooper from the two yard line. Jumped back before he could reach the 20. To down to the field and Jen Hale. And then there were two, Chris, two Iron Men who have actually started every game for this Cardinals squad. Safety Jalen Thompson and right tackle Kelvin Beecham. And you know, he has every excuse not to go today. He's battling knee and ankle injuries, but he told me pregame there's no way he wasn't going to finish what he started and go today. It, for him, it's about being a consummate teammate, a pro's pro. One more example, just like J.J. Watt, about what's been right with this Cardinals squad in an otherwise treacherous season. Quick pass. Blau starts with one, and Farrow Cooper, who just returned the kick, catches it up across the 23-yard line. And these are the numbers last week. He has bounced around through his career, more recently with the Lions. Cooper back to Blau. Deep downfield for Green, and he catches it. A.J. Green will take it. All the way into the end zone, and that is a Cardinals touchdown. And that deserves a blow. <laughs> How about that? What did David Blau say to us in the meeting? He said, I used to look up to A.J. Green, you know, because Andy Dalton was a Texas quarterback, former, uh, former TCU quarterback. He's like, I used to look up to these guys. I used to watch them growing up. We were like, you ever, you ever tell them that? He said, no, but what a tremendous play call there by Cliff Kingsbury, taking the chance early. Well executed, and it still took a great effort from the 12-year veteran Green on the other end. There were a couple of 49ers back there on defense, and then the effort to reach the end zone covering 77 yards. However, the extra points by Matt Prater is not good. Let's take a look at how this started <laughs> and how it ended. Well, A.J. Green's going to be lined up over here, and you're going to see the action moving across there with the fake sweep, and he gets it back there to Blau, and Blau knows he's going to be taking a big shot there from S Samson at Bootcom. And A.J. Green just went up and fought for it. And this is what David Blau said. He said, I'm going to give you some chances to go up and fight for some footballs. Does it on the second play of the game. Green does a nice job selling that thing early, acting like he's not going to do anything. Yeah, it was D'Amador Lenore, who some offenses like to pick on in this 49ers secondary. And then to Sean Gibson on the other end who chased him down. But Blau survived the hit. And frustration from... Lenore and the 49ers secondary as J.J. Watt will take the field in a moment, but another veteran in A.J. Green is. Yeah, it is 14th career touchdown catch of 50 yards or more. And again, that was 77 yards, a free agent after this year. But as you just said, Blau looking up to him and the two connected. Ray Ray McLeod watches it sail over his head. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's. I know 49er fans just said, "Oh, wait a minute, we were supposed to put the Raiders away easily last year." But Purdy, he hung in there, and so did the entire team. And look at this first rookie with two touchdown passes in each of his first career starts and winning the games. It's absolutely amazing. And even though he's played through kind of a little bit of oblique pain in that area very much a hip thrower and he said he's feeling better not a hundred percent that's that use of pain injections against seattle but he's he and lost since he's taken over from the 25 yard line mccaffrey picks up nine offensive line aaron brooks out with the ankle and knee injury we will see 
Elijah Mitchell, as you mentioned, and Debo Samuel. He can run, he can catch, he can do whatever you need him to Debo do. Debo Samuel is the ultimate Swiss Army knife, and he's so physical for a wide receiver, lined up in the backfield, taking handoffs. You see on jet sweep action, and it's the versatility of these pieces offensively that allows the 49ers to give a defense so many looks. Started in the backfield. Purdy completes. That's use check to midfield. Kyle use check to the 40 of the Cardinals. You're going to see use check lined up on the left hand side. And again, it's about the versatility of the pieces in this offense. Use check many times lined up in the backfield. You'll see him on lead isos, but also has a versatility release on routes. And Brock Purdy finds him underneath and look at the run after the catch for the Harvard fullback. One of three pro bowlers on this offense, three starting pro bowlers on defense as well. Cardinals have had trouble bringing down runners. Yards after catch. Pickup of 26. Brock Purdy. Pressure coming from Watt, but he'll take off and go down the sideline. And he's out of bounds with a 49er first down. Well, I just love the pocket presence of Brock Purdy. He had an opportunity to call a number of his games when he was at Iowa State, and he just understands the timing. Look, if I can't find a route, I know somebody's going to be coming. And that somebody was J.J. Watt. He's like, I need to get on the move. Keep my eyes downfield. But he decides to keep that one. Casually picks up 13. I like what he said when he stepped in. I didn't have to be the guy. You know, people like Juszczyk and McCaffrey and Kittle have already seen these guys on display. But he's come up bigger than anyone could have imagined. Called in by Ayuk. And three Cardinals there in a hurry. Chase Whitaker from his corner spot and up front we talked a lot about J.J. Watt his final game in the NFL and the rest of this lineup they're shuffling in fact they've used to hurt Jen with injuries 81 players they've used this year that's a franchise record for the Cardinals yeah number nine Isaiah Simmons the former Clemson linebacker and safety versatile athlete and Vance Joseph the defensive coordinator we asked him about Isaiah Simmons had never seen a player with that type of versatility going to be playing mostly safety today because of the injuries Buda Baker their leading tackler out McCaffrey knocked down around the 22 yard line McCaffrey could have made the Pro Bowl over 700 yards six touchdowns on the ground three through the air since becoming a 49er if you combine things he's already got a thousand yard season from his Carolina Panther part of the season they were three and four when they made the big deal and between him and Purdy and the rest of this team coming together even with their injuries that last since yeah nobody more excited than George Kittle to get Christian McCaffrey in this offense that he called him up right away and has that same physical mentality that the 49ers love Debo Samuel in motion. Brock Purdy will dump it off to McCaffrey. He's got a blocker. He's headed for the end zone, and Christian McCaffrey has a 49er touchdown. Boy, some really nice downfield blocking. 21 yards and the key to running these screens is understanding the timing and it's generally the timing with the right guard and it's going to be Spencer Buford on this one you've got to sell that you're going to be blocking inside and McCaffrey just such a natural runner so smooth he does so many things that allow him to be successful as a pass catcher as a runner he's just so much fun to watch but always nice when you get the big convoy in front of you. Robbie Gold, the extra points. And the 49er faithful, 49er family. Just like that, they have the lead, 7-6. Sly and the family stone to break. Dance to that music. What a way to start. It went to Farrell Cooper, then back to Blau, and then he completes to A.J. Green, covering 77 yards. Extra point missed, and then... Brock Purdy to Christian McCaffrey, who now has a touchdown, at least one, in his sixth straight game. Okay, you saw that arm angle change from Brock Purdy. It's that baseball background. 
that he credited for his ability to do that so naturally. But man, I just love watching Christian McCaffrey run with the football. He just does so many things perfectly. Farrell Cooper will let it sail. And they'll come out to the 25 yard line. Yeah, so we mentioned some of the shuffling. DeAndre Hopkins is inactive again. Robbie Anderson is out. This offensive line, Kelvin Beecham, has been kind of the main man in the moment. But uh, go to targets. Trey McBride coming off the best game of his rookie career. Yeah, and so many pieces out throughout the season for this Arizona Cardinal offense including tight end Zach Ertz but Trey McBride really emerged a week ago, week ago with his first touchdown of his pro career. Wow to throw and completes it's Farrell Cooper who's been busy brought down around the 27 yard lines one thing as we look at this uh, San Francisco defense and having Armstead who's not quite all the way back but getting healthier along with Bosa his seven Nick Bosa 17 and a half sacks and 18 tackles for a loss he leads the NFL in that department an NFL defensive player of the year favorite of the moment and in the secondary who are you keeping your eye on uh, it's got to be Talanoa Hufangu and D'Amico Ryan's defensive coordinator said that he's gotten a little undisciplined with his eyes but that's just because he wants to be so involved with the run game Wow's throw they were locked up over there AJ Green incomplete their various Ward, who is kind of well, I would say outside of this area, under the radar is one of the top corners in the NFL. And what he's done for San Francisco since coming over from Kansas City has been outstanding. Leads the team and passes defensed. Well, this is exactly the situation that the Arizona Cardinals did not want to be in. This 49ers defense, one of the best front four. They don't normally need to bring any extra pressure, but sometimes you want to dial up that heat in a situation like this third and seven plus. On a third down, Blau has a moment, but he's going to go down inside the 20. 49ers with a sack. Samson Ebukam, his now, what, five and a half sacks this season. Well, they just bring more than this Cardinal offensive line can block. And you see Bosa, he gets moved to the outside, moved to the inside, blows things up from the inside. But it's just too many bodies, too many guys moving in different directions. And a very well coordinated rush attack. We saw some of that at practice the other day. Those guys do it better than anybody. Andy Lee back to punt. Former 49er back since 2017 coming to the Cardinals second highest punt average. 47 and a half yards as Ray Ray McLeod spins out of an ankle tackle and works his way up to the 39 yard line. <laughs> Which one is security? I want to know. <laughs> Elijah Mitchell is in the backfield. He gets the carry. Looking for room. Brock Purdy, by the way, that was his 11th touchdown pass. The dominance here, remember it was Trey Lance to Garoppolo to Purdy, but this winning streak, best since 97. And look what they are points-wise. Opponents per game the turnover margin is another factor plus 12 and again securing the division title and need a win to get the two seed and watching that Eagles game and an Eagles loss and a win to get the number one seed in the NFC playoffs. Pretty in trouble and he is sacked and change hey what. 113 regular season sacks. We got all those numbers handier because we know this is his last game. And 11 and a half for this season. Watch him get skinny to get inside Burford right here. And he seemed almost offended that I said, hey, at your age, you know, you can't quite do what you did when you first came in the league. You know, how do you beat people? And he said he is just so much smarter, sees things so much better, and understands the technique that he needs to beat each particular player. 50th different quarterback Purdy added to the list. Bruce Smith owns the all time record over 70. And the pass on target to a diving Brandon Ayuk, and he didn't hang on when he hit the ground. Might have another look at that. It looked like the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass, fourth down. All right, so did he need the ground to make the catch? Well, I never saw that thing touch the ground. No. There's no question that that thing bounces up and down. Yeah, but but I, it looked I, like his hands were under it the whole time. 
Oh, nope. yep, right there. Up there. Yep, good call. They were on top. I thought it stayed under his arm. But they had a better angle than us initially. Uh, diving. <laughs> yeah, we're way up here. Uh, but we have camera angles. Uh, they got it right on the first time around. It was a good throw. But a little bit much for Brock Purdy. Diving. Are you having? He's closing in, by the way, at a thousand yard receiving season. Harold Cooper with a chance from the 23 of Arizona. And once he gets across the 30, knocked back. Purdy surviving the sack of J.J. Watt, who said, hey, I thought about retiring this year, and I wanted to make sure I went out at least still playing at a high level, and he certainly is. Well, you never forget your roots, and J.J. Watt, he was emotional. We played that for him when we had a chance to sit down yesterday, and, and he just said, boy, there are people in your life that make a difference. His wife looking on. I want to get your thoughts on coaches more than just football determine a path for you or he Clements up to the 34. Yeah no question about it they say a good coach makes you a better player and great coach makes you a better person and clearly J.J. Watt had a lot of great people in his life guiding his way and kind of hearing him talk about his decision to retire this week really no surprise some of the things that he talked about because he felt that the most important thing about playing football was being able to have an influence and maybe some way some small way change the world Wow on first down dumps it off to Corey Clement and he gets out of bounds the former Philadelphia Eagle James Connor inactive there is a flag down holding offense number 15 10 yard penalty replay second down they lead the nfl in penalties averaging seven a game so that'll push them back further there's defensive coordinator D'Amico ryan's mentioned as a head coaching candidate and a former teammate we're talking about jj watt when jj came in as a rookie D'Amico ryan's the veteran on the houston texan team said he wanted to live near him and then and then jj said and there they are he said look if, if there is an opening in houston D'Amico ryan's would be a great candidate to be the head coach i think he deserved that boy it's a great story though D'Amico ryan's told about jj watt jumping out of his gap earlier and earlier in his career and he said yeah he can get away with that stuff back then wow with an empty backfield completes greg dorch fights hard lenore ran him near the sideline it'll bring up they need to get to the 40 for a first down bring up a third down check exactly where that spot is it's at the 37 and we're seeing some nice zip on that ball from david blau and of course he played Football, high school football in Texas and Cliff Kingsbury knew all about him recruited him when he was at Texas Tech and of course he started some games for the Lions and then had been on the Vikings practice squad had an opportunity to bring him in you can see why Kingsbury likes him third and three has to get rid of it quickly Dorch is short of the first down he did hang on Jimmy Ward tackled him and that extra stretch not only I don't think the officials are going to give him that I think they spot it right where he was brought down and it's an early fourth down well nothing nothing to lose here they had done it a lot early gonna go for go for it here on on fourth down yeah this is in Kingsbury's DNA and I don't think <laughs> that didn't see the surge where's that push from behind for Blau Got Eric Armstead back and healthy. They don't even measure. First wow. down, 49ers. That defense up front. They didn't need much. They didn't get whatever they needed. Boy, just all kinds of push on the interior, but it's Eric Armstead right over the ball. And he's a tall guy, six foot seven, but he plays with great pad level and leverage. Just stuffed that thing in. Fred Warner taking a dive over the top, <laughs> making sure that the pusher a lot of times can't get any leverage and helping to get that first down. Yeah, and that defense without Dre Greenlaw, the Pro Bowler, uh, of course, is Fred Warner, but Greenlaw having a Pro Bowl season and ailing back, leading the team in tackles, inactive today on first down. McCaffrey is thrown down. He'll lose 
yardage. Let's get a game break. Check in with Carissa Thompson. Thank you so much, Chris. So the Eagles were already up 3-0. Of course, they clinched the number one seed with a win. This helps Jalen Hurts. Hands it off to Boston, Boston Scott, who does the rest. Eagles lead this one, Chris, 10-0. All right, thank you, Carissa. 49ers need a loss from the Eagles and a win if they want the one seed, and they, of course, need a win to secure the two seed. I know Kyle Shanahan said, of course, we want to win this game, stay healthy, go into the playoffs, but we want the best seeding we can get, and he'll be. He said, oh, he's honest. I can't help it. I'll be keeping an eye on that score with the Eagles. Quick toss. It bounced towards Debo Samuel. The pressure was on. <laughs> and who do you think and, it was? Yeah, he, he's starring today in this film. <laughs> See J.J. Watt get through here and give the Mutombo finger wag afterwards. No, no, no. And change the arm angle right there, but Purdy just couldn't get enough in that thing. Didn't really want to step into it. I asked, he actually deflected. I asked Watt about the favorite, all these quarterbacks, uh, who's his favorite to Saki. He didn't hesitate. He said the next one. <laughs> and he already took care of Purdy today. Isaiah Simmons will bring down Brock Purdy all the way back at the 49er 42 yard line. And it's going to be that pressure from J.J. Watt again that's going to drive Brock Purdy out of the pocket. And Isaiah Simmons, we talked about him earlier with his closing speed. Watch J.J. move all the way to the inside here. Still got some lateral movement for an older guy, right? But then you use your backup right there, Isaiah Simmons, to close and finish the sack. Mitch Wisnowski, by the way, there was kind of a flu bug going around the 49ers this week. He had it briefly. Has placed 52% of his kicks inside the 20. It's the highest rate in the NFL. He does it again at the 16 as Cooper gets up across the 25-yard line. A 7-6 game. Cardinal defense keeps him in it after giving up an opening touchdown drive and Brock Purdy trying to survive the wrath of J.J. Watt and company. Throughout this week, the entire NFL family has been praying for DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills as he continues his recovery. And we thank the first responders and medical professionals involved in his care. The San Francisco 49ers ask you to join us in a moment of support and love for DeMar and cheer for him and his family as they continue their fight. That was moments before the game today, before the national anthem, part of the healing process. Not, not so much a moment of silence, a moment of applause and support that we have seen since it happened for DeMar Hamlin making great progress. Passes high. What a one-handed catch. Didn't get a whole lot, but Greg Dorch has not dropped a pass this season. That's 63 targets in his direction, and he shows you why with that. Yeah, and he really impressed as a scout team player. And you can see the plan here is really to get the ball out quickly, try and get the ball to the perimeter. But D'Amico Ryan's defensive coordinator for the 49ers, he's really tightening up that coverage, not giving a lot of space. That was deflected by Nick Bosa. Second down, seven. Pressure coming. Blau, that's deflected and low and complete. A flag down. Back around the 22-23 yard line. Jimmy Ward's the one who deflected the pass on that delayed blitz. Extra pressure. The call against the Cardinals. Holding offense, number 79. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Well, that's easy to see why Josh Jones was called. He was working against Bosa. Yeah, you see Bosa here coming off the edge in that sprinter stance, and Jones had a couple holding penalties a week ago, and it's that quick move to the inside. He gets by there, and Jones just grabs some jersey to try and protect his quarterback, a good flag, and this is the worst possible scenario this Arizona Cardinals offense against this kind of defense putting yourself in this kind of hole need 18 for a first down the pass is delivered to the 27 that's Hollywood that's Marquise Brown been battling a wrist injury 
again without Robbie Anderson and Hopkins the offense downfield for Arizona somewhat limited Blau did throw the ball downfield last week quite a quite a bit more than we had seen even the healthier Kyler Murray do earlier in the year now third down nine threatening extra pressure here it comes Blau flips a forward shovel pass Clory Clement across the 30 Fred Warner brings him down and it's fourth down yeah Z's Al Shire who's brought some of, some of that initial pressure and this is forces David Blau out of the pocket and he's just going to try and get rid of that ball say hey I don't carry this thing for a living you go ahead and try and pick up a few on this one but again they put themselves in the hole as they've done so many times this year with the penalties those can be absolute drive killers everybody tries to be Patrick Mahomes not everybody can be Eddie Lee just got that away back at the 16 on the return McLeod all the way up near the 30 before going out of bounds and he goes on to beat the Dolphins in relief of Garoppolo and has won his first four NFL starts. We'll show you a list of rookie quarterbacks. There is Sir Lancelot, Sir Trey Lance. <laughs> no rookie quarterback, by the way. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but this guy has a chance, has ever led a team to the Super Bowl. And we have started the most quarterbacks in NFL history this season. 68 different starting quarterbacks, the most all time. 13 teams have used three different starters, including the 49ers on their third, and the Cardinals have used four. Purdy with a quick throw and a catch at the 40. It's Ayuk, who couldn't come up with the last one good enough for a first down. That punt, by the way, 53 yards and a 14-yard return, so this completion helps the field position as the 49ers protect a first-quarter one-point lead spotted at the 41-yard line. And of course not taking anything away from Brock Purdy because he's made some good throws and I tell you he's got some great short area of quickness you know he moves well slides well in the pocket but I think that this is a team the way that the offense is constructed really built for younger quarterbacks to come in and thrive. Quick pass moving towards midfield that's George Kittle's first catch of the game. One of the great personalities in the NFL. Another Pro Bowl year for George Kittle. Well, back to, to Purdy, it's interesting that he grew up in Queens Creek, Arizona. Went to Perry High School in Gilbert, so Arizona. But his dad, of course, facing the Cardinals here, his dad was a Dolphin fan and Marino, so that's why he grew up a Marino fan and wears number 13. Elijah Mitchell is in the backfield. He gets the football big hole Mitchell spins in the air lands around the 44 and it's a first down. These guys are just so good and so many different looks they give up front you see that very young Brock Purdy high school player of the year the Arizona Cardinals high school player this is 2017. He still looks like that, by the way. He, he just he just had a birthday to turn 23. He's just, just a little yeah. bit older and wiser now. Yeah, that's it. Uh, an adventurous, an exciting first quarter. Cardinals score on their first possession. So do the 49ers, but they have the one-point lead as we head to the second quarter here in Santa Clara, California. Levi Stadium here. Beautiful weather day. There's been a lot of rain in the area during the week. Field was covered, but we're in the 60s with the sun out. Very little wind. A moment ago here as we start the second quarter, these two were just in the trenches going at it. There's George Kittle with J.J. Watt, and then they're waving and saying, hey, look, right, that's, uh, and that's J.J. I guess they're saying hi to Kalia, his wife, with baby son Koa, and she's up in the stands. Right, how cool was that? J.J. talking about his favorite NFL moments, and one of them was baby Koa being at first game a few weeks back. Incomplete. Jawan Jennings, the target. Yeah, we talk about a quarterback's development and that timing and time on task, just understanding how certain wide receivers go in and out of breaks, just absolutely crucial because the margin of error in the NFL, just so small. The timing, very important. Watch 
From the 45, they need 10 for a first. Purdy is running and knocked down behind the 50-yard line. My Jay Sanders, the rookie from Cincinnati, came up on an unusual-looking play. I mean, was that designed as a run for Purdy? It certainly looked like it, but credit Vance Joseph, defensive coordinator, and this entire Cardinal defense, these guys are playing with a lot of fire. Didn't have their best game a week ago, especially up front, but with all of the, these new faces, you see a lot of these guys just playing with a lot of intensity. It takes emotion to play on the defensive side of the ball, but you got to be in the right place, and you got to execute. A loss of eight, big play. The Arizona defense, Purdy not comfortable and throws toward the sideline, but there just wasn't a whole lot there for him to work with. And it's fourth down for this 49er offense. Dennis Gardeck applying some of the defensive pressure. Yeah, this defense, excuse me, Robert, they're without Zach Allen and they're without, we, we mentioned Buda Baker, I know Zavin Collins who's played well for them. Well, and that secondary, I mean, you know, this is why Isaiah Simmons is back there playing safety. Jalen Thompson, one of only two players that's played in every game this year. So a lot of new people on the back end doing a nice job covering up, making sure Brock Purdy had nowhere to go on that one. And no Marco Wilson or Antonio Hamilton. Chris Banjo went on injured reserve. Wisnowski angling. Fair catch called for. A little bit of sunshine there. Farrell Cooper holds it in. After the 39 yard punt, puts the Cardinals at their 13. This crowd hoping for a little defense here. Kind of tip is more in favor of the home team. Blau floats one and a mix up. And there it is. A big defensive play. The 49ers with a takeaway to Sean Gibson, who was down there when the Cardinals made the big play with A.J. Green for the touchdown, and he comes up with the interception. And Gibson has his eyes on Blau the whole way here. And Blau throws this one. His receivers doesn't have his eye back on this one. Doesn't really think that that ball is going to be coming to him. But Blau wanted to take a chance and paid for it. 49ers were ready for that. You see, talk, you, we talk about that timing and understanding not just how receivers come in and out of routes, but how they're going to adjust to certain coverage. Blau throws that one to the inside, thinking that Goodwin's going to be in there. But he was moving to the outside. Excuse me, Brown. McCaffrey carries. Gibson. Had an interception at overtime last week and then crazy win against the Raiders his fourth pick and already in striking distance protecting this one point lead Eagles have a 10 nothing lead over the Giants as they play in the second quarter late. Arizona defense has applied the pressure. On Purdy. Eagles just added a field goal. McCaffrey remains the back. He's got the touchdown on the catch from Purdy. And he gets that grab. Quick acceleration inside the 10 yard line, just short of the first down. Boy, we talked about the versatility of this offense and the stress that it puts on, it puts on defenses with the different motions and shifts. And they're trying to get tells pre snap. I mean, you have an opportunity to get the ball to a guy like Christian McCaffrey on the outside and some of these other weapons. It's one of those throw short, run long kind of offenses. You want to take your shots from time to time, but you, you always need to know that you don't need to risk it, especially in this area of the field. Got to come away with points. Jennings, top of your screen. Rock Purdy gets him to jump. Let's see. Adrian Hill, fourth season as a referee, an aerospace software engineer. Encroachment defense, number 95. Five yard penalty, it results in a first down. Well, this is something that was a real problem a week ago against Atlanta. J.J. Watt got called for a couple of them. You get lined up over the ball like that, no matter how many times you tell guys, watch the ball, don't listen to the cadence, but a nice job of Brock Purdy using the cadence to get a few extra yards. 
Mitchell in the backfield. McCaffrey in motion. Elijah Mitchell has it. Bouncing into the end zone. And that's a 49er touchdown. A takeaway and a quick six for the 49ers. We talk about eye dis discipline and why it's so important for a defense because you know that offenses are going to be using all kinds of motion. You'll see the motion that way, but then you'll see Mitchell. Nice tough run. Not one, but two defenders come free on that one, but because he's running with good pad level and because he stays skinny tight to his offensive lineman, he's able to get that one into the end zone. The extra point is good. Elijah Mitchell had that knee injury against the Saints. This is only his fifth limited to four games this season prior to coming here but having him back and Debo Samuel both getting their hands on the football Mitchell takes it into the end zone and George Kittle says that's what I like to see <laughs> Elijah Mitchell his first touchdown of this season second year player who was drafted in the sixth round from Louisiana Lafayette last year and that's another thing this 49er team does so well is draft well and then making moves like obviously getting a Christian McCaffrey feeling it at the right time when you need to add a veteran as they watch the Rams do that on their Super Bowl run. Yeah and certainly the best organizations they draft well they scout well and they trade well and you really got to do all of those things in combination because you never know when you're going to get hit with some of those strings of injuries. Touchback out to the 25 and let's get another game break. Check in with Carissa. Thank you, Chris. So Cowboys trailing 7-0 when Dak Prescott's pass intercepted by Kendall Fuller and returned at 29 yards for six. Extra point no good. Commanders leading this one 13-0. Chris? All right, thank you very much. Washington, one of those teams that has started a variety of quarterbacks this year. AFC playoff picture is all set. The NFC, there are still some things to decide here, including a seating process. Blau dumps it off. That's the tight end, the rookie tight end, McBride. And Trey McBride gets up across the 45-yard line. Going to go with a little play action on this one. First down, see all that run action, and McBride's going to do a little tight end delay. Blocks inside. He's caught a number of passes that way. And you can see nice run after catch. Slid his way into the end zone on the touchdown last week. His first career TD. Farrow Cooper on the direct snap. The Wildcat from Cliff Kingsbury. And he works it down around the 46 of San Francisco. He was active last week in their game with Atlanta carrying the football on a jet sweeps they do that by the way uh, David Blau is his fourth year from Purdue that Cleveland had signed him undrafted free agent he was with the Lions cut by them went to the Vikings and was signed off their practice squad in the middle of December by the Cardinals and here he's starting back-to-back -back games and chasing a football there's a whistle and a flag Sloan dead right away There was no play, false start offense, number 53. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, see, even even good football teams can't can't make these kinds of penalties. They, they just dig a hole and create problems. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And Billy Price, and of course, he hasn't been in there at center all year long in because of injuries. I can't tell if that hits foot of the motion man or he just snaps that thing high, but either way, Call the penalty on that one. Yeah, 20 players injured reserve. We can count as many as 16 starters. That's currently third most injuries in the NFL. Wow, he's going to go down. It's at the 45. Nick Bosa, 18 and a half sacks, continuing to add on to his NFL league leading total. Yeah, and Blau has got a pretty good pocket sense, but sometimes when you just get beat like this, and again, We've seen so many times in his career, Nick Bosa, he's just got so much speed and power and closes. And I think one of the more underrated aspects of defensive line play is having the good vision, has the vision on Blau, and that one turned in at the right time to get the sack. Third and 14, pressure coming, dumps it off. Corey Clement slips a tackle. 
They'll have a first down inside the 49er 40 yard line. Yeah, good play call here, getting that ball right over the middle of the field. And it's going to be a block from Trey McBride on Hufunga that's going to be coming across. That really springs this and allows it to get to a first down. And you see Mc, McBride up there on the 50 yard line comes in there. Defensive minded people would say it was a block in the back, but it looked like a block in the side to me, being a former offensive guy. Corey Clement, you remember him from the Eagles. He was actually with the Ravens. After he picks up 17, here are more flags. Ebukam may have jumped. And this running game. Offside defense, number 56. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. Mentioned that James Conner is out. He's been the leading rusher and was last year for this Cardinal team with a knee and shin injury so it really has affected the running game you have your leading rusher out one of your top your top receiver obviously in Hopkins and yet the creative play calling of Cliff Kingsbury has kept them in this game yeah and at this time of year no teams are really fully healthy right like that's just kind of the nature of the league it's a long year but this line has especially had some injury problems banged up and there's Connor on the yeah, side and that's Farrell Cooper taking the direct snap and then he hands it off Corey Clement gets inside the 30. So <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury make that Dorch on the handoff. Excuse me, it wasn't Corey Clement, but it was Farrell Cooper on the direct snap. The well, Wildcat. This, this is the challenge that you have in week 18 of a season. You're trying to get plays on the field that they haven't seen on tape, and they haven't had a lot of success with conventional run. Really, haven't tried it a whole lot. So just trying to get these speedy players onto the perimeter and some direct snap, and they had done some of that with James Conner as well. Got the first down, impressive drive after the turnover and then the 49er touchdown. Corey Clement goes nowhere. Give Al Aziz Al Shire credit. This is the best run defense allowing just under 79 yards per game. And they are number one in scoring defense. They only allow 60 and a half points per game. But Kyle Shanahan said, hey, you know, you got to keep guys motivated in yards given up. They're not number one anymore. A couple of teams off as I challenge him said, hey, how does it feel now? You know, you're number two or you're three. Think about that when you go out there. Keontae Ingram has entered the game. Blau will keep inside the 30. It'll bring up a third down. We talk about that vision once again. Just understanding that you need to keep your eye on the quarterback the whole way and just kind of anticipated that he was going to be taken off on that run right there and already beaten his man, turns back in and makes the play. Nice job by McGill. <laughs> the, that's a bit of a Buddha celebration right there, too, rubbing his belly. They need 11. Blau throws quickly. The pass caught and falling. It's Trey McBride. Al Shires brought him down. Should be enough for the first down. Check the spot and they're moving the chains. He got the first down. You can see the comfort level in Blau despite the pressure from this 49er defense. Yeah, just a simple option route from Trey McBride and he's going to beat Al Shire on that one. He's got that ability to separate out of his break. But it was also the run after catch. He needed a few more yards on that one, which allowed him to get the first down. Greg Dorch. And it still <laughs> hasn't stopped. Like it, it was about five yards ago when it looked like the play was over. And he took it all the way to the 10-yard line. You see Dorch, he's lined up right here. It's going to be a handoff inside, but you see that reverse out action by David Blau. And that's something that probably haven't seen on film. A lot of creative looks in the run game today. We know what the 49ers can do with their offensive create creativity in the run look. And now going to go with a little bit of pistol action. Blau hands to Corey Clement. And the surge can't tell where he is in that. I don't know how officials can see that well enough to spot it. But he did get the first down. That was what the priority was for the Cardinals. You know, teams have been running for a better average, and that includes running quarterbacks this year. I mean, one of the all-time records in the NFL, but the 49er average 
keeping teams from running success per carry is outstanding. First and goal, Cardinals. Corey Clement down towards the goal line. Cardinals opened up throwing a lot. Now they seem to be running with more success. Yeah, love this from Clement again, keeping that pad level low, so important near the goal line. Just getting that thing downhill, and you know that you need to do that against a team like the 49ers. They're extremely physical, but the offensive line, again, we've talked about all the different line combinations, all of the injuries. They're doing an excellent job up front, allowing the backs to get to that second level. Corey Clement straight ahead, and he is in for a Cardinal touchdown. A bounce back and touchdown drive for Arizona. After the Cardinal interception on the 49ers score. A 12-play drive. And you see Billy Price at that center position. Watch him come off on this ball against Kinlaw. And you don't need to get drive all the time. Sometimes you just have to occupy a guy in the middle of the offense like that. And as a running back, you know, that guy may have an arm free, but as long as I keep my pad level low because of that block, just got enough on him, I can still get that thing in there. Matt Prater this time with the extra point. First rushing touchdown for Corey Clement, the sixth year player from Wisconsin, who gets the underdog Cardinals just a little bit closer. One point 49er lead, just over four and a half before halftime. Cardinals cap off a 75 yard drive. Corey Clement, his first touchdown as a Cardinal, we said, but his 11th over his six year career. Yeah, really impressive on that drive. And I love the different looks that Cliff Kingsbury gave there. And again, without James Conner in there, you haven't seen as much conventional downhill running. But when they needed it down there at the goal line, they were able to do it. That means your offensive line is getting it done. Ray Ray McLeod has room all the way up near the 34 yard line. What a return for McLeod, and he sets up Brock Purdy rather nicely. Two rookies made their first start in week 14 or later and then started in the playoffs. Remember Marinovich, Connor Cook, both for the Raiders, both lost. Three backups took over as a starter in week 14. That's when Purdy did. Or later, went to a Super Bowl, one of Doug Williams, Hostetler, Foles. <laughs> Four rookies have started their conference championship games. Sean King, Ben Roethlisberger, Flacco, Sanchez. All lost that game, though. Again, no rookie quarterback has ever started a Super Bowl. He has that chance. And it is in his home state of Arizona on Fox. Purdy to throw and open. Hanging on at the 45. Brandon Ayuk. When they talk about the way that Ayuk has emerged, he's going to be coming up on 1,000 yards receiving for the season. It's going to be a deep over route. But what I love about this one is he knows that he's going to be taking a pop from Christian Matthew, but still hangs on to this ball. But a nice throw again from Brock Purdy delivering a strike over the middle. Pick up a 22. IU challenged early in his career by Kyle Shanahan. He's always tough on receivers because that's the position Kyle played in college about. Just blocking better route running, and Ayuk has responded. He's emerged as the ace receiver. Of course, Debo Samuel does so many other things as McCaffrey gets inside the 40, flag back at the 45. Looks like it might be Sanders. No, that's a Golden that jumped. Offside, defense, number 44, five yard penalty, replay, first down. It was Marcus Golden, as you mentioned, Robert. Yeah, and you can see Marcus Golden here. And again, this is a, this is a defense that really struggled with this a week ago. 
And I know it's easy, right? Like, it's easy for us to sit up here and say, hey, just hold your water, hold your water. But these guys want to make a play, and I think it says a lot about this Cardinals team, the way that they showed up today. Alert. Hey, 47, 47. Hey, McCaffrey straight ahead, and Christian McCaffrey spinning inside the 30 and gets a 49er first down. Hey, it was Kyle Shanahan who kind of challenged this team. He fired up for this game, wanted a 200-yard rush performance today. And You're going to get a little, bit of, a little bit of counter action here. You're going to get Kyle Juszczyk coming across, George Kittle coming across, and they'll run this a, a number of different ways. You run that counter sometimes with a a guard and a tackle, sometimes with a tackle and a tight end, sometimes with a fullback and a tight end, like you saw right there. Yeah. McCaffrey picked up 10. As I was saying about the 200 yard rushing performance, the 49ers have done that once this year, and that was against the Buccaneers. That was the start for Brock Purdy. So the rookie needed that. They've he challenged them to do that. They've been over 100 four times coming into this game as a team. You can see tackle for loss right there. And again, he's talked about the way that his technique has improved so much throughout his career because he sees things so much better. You know, you talk about that guard center guard triangle when you're on the defensive line. He does it all, and this is his final game, as you know by now. He's having fun. That's one thing he always did. Enjoyed playing the game and still said that's the most important thing, and he wanted his teammates to think about that as he spoke to him going into this game. 49ers need to win to at least secure the second seed. Brock Purdy on target. Inside the 20. Jawan Jennings. Good enough for the first down. Yeah, and you're going to see Jennings runs a nice route, and Purdy gets it out with the proper timing, and that's what you have to do because you can see My J Sanders. That thing gets out any later. My J Sanders can drop off and deflect that thing. And that's something Purdy really has developed a sense of timing in this offense, knows. That he needs to get rid of that ball. The runner reaching the line the game for first down is under review. Inside of two minutes, want to make sure <laughs> that catch was good enough for a first down. They, his nickname is uh, Third and Jawan. At least that's what the 49er. But they didn't need him on third down here necessarily. But let's see. Again, that's just kind of a guideline. The yellow marker. And oh yeah, he's definitely know, short. Just yep, just a bit short. Good review there from one, the booth. One thing through the Kyle Shanahan, you know, the, the 49ers the last six years, what's made them successful in a number of ways, they, they're they the most dominant team on first down. They average more, almost more than six yards, and, and that always makes it easier than on second and, and third down. Dean Blandino, our rules analyst, watching along with us. And, Dean, your thought on the way this was reviewed or why it was necessary to just say, hey, it's not a first down. Yeah, in the last two minutes, right, no coaches challenge. So this came from the replay official. Line of game is just shy of the 19. This is a great look. You're going to see Jennings get spun around. It looks like the spot is closer to the 20. So they should move this back. And this will set up a third down instead of a first down. And again, late in the half, every down matters. So that's why replay is looking at this. Okay. And obviously the knee touched down and the ball was a little bit back. Had it been the other way, right, had the ball been forward, where that knee was, or at least across. Well, anything but a hand, anything but a hand or a foot. It looks like that. It looks like that helmet actually comes down. When that helmet comes down, that makes him down there. Yeah. So they quickly called it a first down, and as Dean explained, they just wanted to make sure. And that's why the replay official has taken a closer look. Thank you, Dean Blandino, and for your uh, your help all season long. By the way, you and Mike Pereira helping throughout all the games. We appreciate that. Well, the point I was getting to before about Purdy it just really understands it. and he talked about you know maybe why the reason he dropped to the last pick in the NFL draft just didn't have a lot of these throws from his college career 
on film, really throwing in rhythm. You can see once he gets into that last step in the drop, even though he's in shotgun there, he kind of gets to the top of that drop. Ball's got to be out. That's what we saw on that last throw. Well, different from his college tape, but he became a better passer. He admitted with his, his agent the same as Trevor Lawrence. Congratulations, by the way, to the Jags. who got him to a kind of a quarterback veteran uh, customized camp where he worked on some of the throws and saw how he could really unleash it. And again, threw more with his hips in his words and made him a more effective thrower. Let's check on this. After review, the ball will be respotted, and then we will measure to see if it is a first down. So as Dean Blandino told us, replay official says double check things. They looked at the catch, the video, the slowed down angle, the spot, and just inside the 20, and they'll measure just so Kyle Shanahan knows what, what he needs here for a first down. Yeah, and the stadium operator clearly wanted them to tell him something good. They were playing Rufus, tell me something good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, tell us it's a first down. <laughs> tell me something. You love your music, and you're, you got an ear for it the minute you hear it. And it that's how short. Now, there could be a 10-second runoff, right? If Let's see here on third and inches. Both, that, both teams have three timeouts remaining here. But that's it, but that's a booth review there. And after measurement, after measurement it was determined that the runner was short of the line of the game. Therefore, it will be third down. Because the review changed the results of the play, the clock will be reset to the time where the play ended, 157, and a 10-second runoff will be enforced. Please set the clock to 147. The clock will start on my ready for play signal. Third down. Thank you, Adrian Hill, for the clarification. The idea is to get it right, and they did. Kyle Shanahan hoping that his team was going to build up a lead strong enough that he could kind of start tuning up. He said, I hadn't thought about who we're playing or the playoffs, that type of thing. I want to take care of this game first, but at some point with the Eagles winning in their game. <laughs> you see Brock, Brock Purdy try to go underneath after that whistle flag and a shaky snap. Yeah, it looks like Brendel just snaps this thing a little bit early. He didn't quite have that snap count down right there. They're going to throw the flag on him, I believe. But Purdy was making sure he was scrambling to get to that football. He's barely six feet. He's crawling underneath the, on the floor of this stadium. Yeah, kind of gets that double snap. He had that thing halfway up and realized, oh, wait a minute. Nope, I'm not supposed to snap it. Well, might as well finish it. Yeah, and he was trying to get, he was, <laughs> might, might as well squirm for the first down after all of the drama <laughs> over the spot. False start, offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, still third down. Arizona has elected to not elect a 10 second runoff. Please set the clock to 134. The time and a foul. The clock will start on the snap. And of course, they don't. They don't want that 10-second runoff. They want to stop them and absolutely have an opportunity. We want to. We want to get a chance. We've got the timeouts. Cardinals will be kicking off to the 49ers to start the second half. So this is important for a number of ways in terms of amount of time and scoring right before the half in a one-point game. Christian McCaffrey lined up on the outside here. On third and six, Purdy has a moment, throws, and the catch made for a first down by McCaffrey. Boy, and that's why he is just so dangerous. You get him lined up on the outside like that, and you don't know who's going to go out there, and this is going to be Jalen Thompson safety. We said it's been getting... He's, a, he's one of the only two players that has started every game this year, but... Christian McCaffrey runs routes like a, a wide receiver, threatens deep, puts on the brakes, makes a catch. Debo Samuel, can he get through? He squeezes inside the 10 yard line. His first catch since returning. Oh, Debo is just the perfect name for Debo Sam Samuel. That's just the way he plays the game. Strong arm here. 
on the outside. He's got some thickness to him. And this is just, hey, I'm going to get the ball into my playmaker's hand, and then he's going to kind of Debo his way close to a first down. 55 catches this year. McCaffrey, the handoff. Three Cardinals start shoving him back, led by Jalen Thompson when he got inside the five-yard line. Yeah, the interchangeable parts between Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. They catch, they run, they block. They have a timeout, Cardinals. Now this from Progressive. Thanks for being with us here. Jed Hale's on the field. Robert Smith up in the booth here. Chris Myers wrapping up the regular season. 49ers trying to add to a one-point lead as we near the half. Jennings goes to the top of your screen. McCaffrey's the back. Samuel in motion. McCaffrey, the Cardinals ready for him. It'll be second and goal. Cardinals, we have another timeout. Let's see if, I mean, at this point, with, what, 24 seconds showing on the clock, not sure what Cliff Kingsbury. Arizona, they're second. This will be they, a 30 they will have one remaining. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee back at the home office in Los Angeles. The Rams are in front of Seattle, and if Seattle should lose, that means the Lions-Packers winner gets that last NFC wildcard playoff spot. 49ers are just worried about getting their 10th straight win. They've won the division. They're either the two seed, the three seed, still a chance at the one seed. Second and goal. Purdy, end zone throw. Oh, a fingertip catch! George Kittle has a 49er touchdown. We talked about the versatility of the many pieces in this offense. George Kittle really known for being a physical player, but he also runs excellent routes, and he's going to be matched up against Isaiah Simmons on this one. We talk about Isaiah Simmons and his speed, but Kittle's going to make a move to the inside, then break back to the outside, and because he gets that little bit of a head shake, Isaiah Simmons just a step behind, but Brock Purdy gets it out with perfect timing with a strike. His 10th. Touchdown catch of the season for Purdy, his second touchdown pass of this game. Kittle now has the third most receiving yards for any tight end in his first six seasons passing, moving ahead of Travis Kelsey at the moment. Yeah, we were asking him in the meeting, like, what feels best to you? You know, getting the flat back blocks. You say, yeah, I like that, but like catching them touchdowns too and does a nice job, not just pulling that thing in there, but the field awareness and body control to get the feet down. He can be violent, but he can be nimble as well. Another reason going to his fourth Pro Bowl. And Purdy, the young guy, <laughs> he's just so calm. Two, yeah, second rookie uh, to throw, rookie quarterback to throw two touchdown passes in six straight games. Herbert did it seven straight back in 2020. But boy, you sit and talk to him, but he really, he, he just seems like he's been doing this for a long time in terms of the profession and still working on getting better and learning from his mistakes. Yeah, and, and trying to forget the mistakes. He said kind of getting to a clean slate. We hear that from quarterbacks all the time that you have to have a short memory, cornerbacks as well. And just being grateful for the opportunity and going out there and executing. And, you know, when he was going to be taken over as starter, linebacker Fred Warner was like, hey, he's been playing against the best defense in the league in practice for 13 weeks. He's going to be all right. He's shown that. Ball will bounce. And with 19 seconds remaining, there's a moment ago after the score. <laughs> he said, hey, hey, Kittle said he's got some dog in him, right? Yeah, that's yeah that's right away. That was, said I said, what do you like about Bird? He's got a lot of dog in him. <laughs> and on the 49er history chart of touchdown passes in consecutive games, boy, I mean, this go back. Young Montana, the history of this great 49er franchise. Not enough time for Arizona to do much. Fred Warner leads the tackle and charge for the San Francisco defense again. 49ers will get the football to start the second half. 21-13. Brock Purdy, a couple of touchdowns. San Francisco in control. Horizon Halftime is right now.
apart from the interception, they've just done a tremendous job in that first half. And, and Brock Purdy, your impressions, we're going to see him first as they get ready to receive the second half kickoff. Well, nothing nothing surprises me about what I've seen out of Brock Purdy. A couple years ago, called the, about four of his games against, or when he was playing for Iowa State, same type of poise he exhibited out in the college level. Out to the 25, let's head down to the field of Jen Hale. Jen? Well, Chris, you mentioned Kyle Shanahan was going to do some scoreboard watching with that Eagles game, and Mike changes personnel based on the outcome. Not anymore. He's not happy with how his team handled that first half. He said, you know, we've got to put them away and stop messing around, leaving windows of opportunity open. He intends to keep his foot on the gas pedal this entire half. Now, one thing that will hurt the 49ers this half, guys, Demetrius Flanagan fouls. He's out with a neck injury. That'll mainly affect San Francisco's special teams. Thank you very much, Jen, for the update from the 25-yard line. McCaffrey, who has a touchdown catch. That's Jennings in motion. Fake to McCaffrey. Middle of the field, Ayuk, and he's over 1,000 receiving yards. Get to the top of that drop and get the ball out of your hands. You'll see Ayuk coming out of the slot here. Again, that timing from Brock Purdy is just getting more and more comfortable. And people have talked about his height and maybe he's not all of six foot one, right? But they talk about his knowledge of the entire grid, where every receiver is and where that needs, where that ball needs to be out within the timing of the route. In his third season, Ayuk over a thousand receiving yards for the first time. McCaffrey. Ezekiel Turner brings him down more than but than efficient is Brock Purdy. He handles things. The pressure was on, but when he needed to, he delivered. That was huge check and a little catch and carries. He said, boy, it's great to have a guy like McCaffrey to dump off to. Yeah, certainly. And he's learned a lot as a starter. He talked about that very first play against Tampa Bay when he was a starter and Neil blasted him, got called for roughing the passer on that one, but that's understanding where your weak spots are and where pressure might come from. He's hit, hangs onto the football, the sack, J.J. Watt. Still has a half left in him. A half of an NFL game over his 12-year career and a three-time defensive player of the year with his wife looking up. And he's gonna split McGlinchey and Burford Look at this. Both of those guys trying to stop him, but he's still got that acceleration and the ability to split those double teams and get home. What a player. Second season with the Cardinals after 10 <laughs> with the Houston Texans, and he's so proud of, of his son, Koa. Part of the decision to step away when he did. McCaffrey with a lot of room. Stiff arming inside the 45 of the Cardinals. Boy, what, a, <laughs> what a call right here. Just understanding what you're going to get on the defensive side. And everybody, of course, expecting the pass. But look at the acceleration from Christian McCaffrey. Gets a little head fake to the inside, buys a few more yards out of that one, gets a stiff arm. Yeah, and on third and 17, they get 19 yards. Remember the playoff game against the Packers when Debo Samuel and when Kyle Shanahan called his number when they had a third down and long and needed the first down and got it on the ground. Purdy throws back off the fingertips of George Kittle. McCaffrey, let's go back to in his sixth year. I mean, they got him in October. And the numbers, this is third season with 1,000 rush yards and 700 receiving yards, second most in NFL history. Marshall Fox done it a few, actually four times for him. But no linebacker can stay with him, and Kyle Shanahan having him and Adebo Samuel to, to work with, I mean, a defense, it, it just has to play with your head. Well, you, you, you're really dictating to the defense. You're saying, okay, with this personnel, we've got a fullback in here. We've got a tight end in the backfield. Are you going to stay heavy and then try and cover these guys once we split them out? Quick dump off to Elijah Mitchell, who has the touchdown run. Mitchell down the sideline. He cuts back all the way inside the 10 of Arizona. It'll be a first and goal 49ers. 
It's that physical mentality of the entire offense, the entire defense. And George Kittle said the way that these guys practice with this defense, they know the defense is going to be physical. We need to be physical, too. Now, is that a hold maybe on the outside? Look, he got a little bit of a, a hug. Debo got that arm around <laughs> Isaiah Simmons on that one to secure the block. And again, it depends on if you're an offensive or defensive minded guy. They may have been able to call a hold on that. One. A 37 yard run down to the six. Mitchell for the end zone and in for another 49er touchdown. Two today for Elijah Mitchell. Woo! George Kittle, we talked about the, the feet being nimble on the last one. This time he's going to go a little bit of freight train action. And again, he said he likes catching those touchdown passes, likes a little bit of flat back. Though, watch him come in motion full speed on this one and doesn't slow down at all. Running through Jesse Lucetta and Trent Williams was already engaged with him. Nice job by Mitchell understanding the blocking scheme and getting it in. Yeah, Trent Williams, Kyle Shanahan said he could be an all pro defensive lineman the way he blocks with Kittle up front and Mitchell into the end zone. A two touchdown day. San Francisco with the lead. George Kittle, <laughs> 49ers flexing their muscles. Flex it, man. He's going to be a great pro wrestler one of these days. Elijah Mitchell coming back off injury along with. Debo Samuel, he picked up 37 yards on this play and then set up his own touchdown run. His second of the day and George Kittle, what he loves to do best, throwing a great block. And by the way, at halftime, his grandmother, her first game here at Levi Stadium, his grandmother, they sang happy birthday. She's 100 years old. She turned 100 on January 6th. Farrow Cooper on the return. And excellent special teams play stopped inside the 15 yard line. Well, and there's a birthday celebration. We could hear them singing. Happy birthday. It's good genes in that family. <laughs> and pregame, he gave her a hug. Oh, that's so great, man. Yeah, I mean, it's football is family. Mm. Getting everybody involved. It was great too between him with his 100 year old grandmother and Koa, JJ Watts, newborn son. Kind of bringing it all together. A family in football. <laughs> 15 point deficit for the Cardinals. Corey Clint stops short of the 19 yard line. Well, big plays when the year started. You know, the Cardinals, first three, they improved win wise each year, got the playoffs last year, then got kind of stomped out. They just haven't had, they've gone 24 games as their 25th without a pass play of 50 yards or more. It's the longest in the NFL. Of course, that touchdown would strap. False start. Offense number 53, five-yard penalty, still second down. That that kept, catch a touchdown in the first half. To AJ Green, even though it was a bit of a flea flicker, would count. Uh, it was 77 yards, so it would snap that string. Yeah, and of course, DeAndre Hopkins out with the suspension early in the season, and now out with the injury. Robbie Anderson, they bring him in with the trade. He's out. So a lot of changing pieces. You never want to make excuses, but they certainly have been dealing a lot with that offense. At one time, there were three and four off the fingertips. Let's check in with Jen. Chris down here on the Cardinals sideline. My Jay Sanders getting some medical attention. They have wrapped and braced his right arm and uh, tightening up his shoulder pads now. As for Cliff Kingsbury, he was pleased with much of what he saw from that first half, except for the self-inflicted wounds. Very frustrating for him. He feels like this team should be past that. He certainly got after them in the locker room for not beating themselves today. Give themselves a chance to pull off this upset against the Niners. All right, thank you, Jen. Six penalties in the game. It's when they came to for Arizona, stifling their offense. On a third and ten, 
Blau has time and goes deep for Hollywood Brown, and it's intercepted. A juggling pick for Tashad Gibson, his second of the day. All the way back inside the 35 of Arizona. Yeah, and Fred Warner is going to be helping out on coverage right here, and it looks like David Blau is going to be taking that shot, hoping that Brown can get it on this over route, but watch the speed from Warner dropping back from his linebacker position to affect this throw and this route from Brown never able to finish the route and Gibson able to get over and get the interception <laughs> after a couple of tries. <laughs> well, he's a defensive back and not a receiver, but that's 19 interceptions for this 49er team this season. Debo Samuel starts on the backfield as Brock Purdy looks around and dumps it off to him. It's up to tackle. Samuel gliding out of bounds. Well, again, Debo Samuel is not the kind of guy that's necessarily going to be beating tight man coverage, but this is what he excels at. Get him the ball on the outside. Give him to some space to operate. With the great lateral movement and the combination of the strength that he has, you can see right there with the stiff arm, makes him so dangerous. The yeah, last two seasons, first player in NFL history with 2,000 receiving yards and 500-plus rush yards in a two-year span. Jordan Mason comes into the game and fights hard. The rookie from rookie free agent from Georgia Tech who actually had to beat out Trey Sermon for a roster spot when you go back to coming into the air and Sermon was uh, drafted in the third round also have along with McCaffrey of Ty Davis Price third rounder from LSU spotted now at the 20 yard line yeah and it was Ben Neiman that got home first on that one what you saw a week ago against Atlanta from this Cardinals defense a lot of guys out of position playing much better against the run since then Mason remains the back and has some room this uh, time inside the 15 yard line. We'll keep you posted with the Eagles score in the upper left in the playoffs. So, and if they win, they secure the top seed. Kyle Shanahan admitted he would be kind of keeping an eye on the clock, but he didn't want his players thinking about that. But. If they are up big and the 49ers are up, you may see some of the starters resting as we're seeing with Mason coming into the game. And we had already seen Elijah Mitchell in that running back spot and Caffrey looking impatient on the sideline. Use, use. Okay. carries for the first down. <laughs> the big man, you ask them to get up on those lead blocks, you better throw them a bone every now and then. That's what you do with Kyle Usechek. Big fullback lined up here so many times you take you to the ball. Sometimes he's going to get that ball. You go with a little sweep action to try and fool the linebackers, but you want to try and get him the ball when you can. You can see he's also an excellent receiver. Again, just so many pieces on this offense. Yeah, he's also he's their emergency quarterback. If you need that, here's Samuel waiting for blocks. Arizona defense came in allowing the third most points in the NFL this season just under 26 points a game defensive coordinator Vance Joseph has, has had to kind of piece things together with a number of his key starters out much of the year and then now at this point going to third and fourth string and players off the practice squad and really at every level of the defense too. Purdy will keep and go out of bounds. It's certainly not the fastest quarterback in the world, but he's got some quicks to him. And more importantly, it was just a good decision. Understanding <laughs> where you are on the field, when you can take off, get a few extra yards. 
and get into a nice manageable third down here. Yeah, he didn't even know his 40 time when we asked what he would <laughs> say, but I've been a scrambler my whole life, and that's good enough. And it certainly has been here. Me, me thinks he may not have been telling the truth about the 40 <laughs> yard. I think he knows his time. <laughs> Jordan Mace from the back. Purdy with time. But not enough. Couldn't get rid of it. Cameron Thomas, rookie from San Diego State, bringing him down. Cam Thomas is one of those guys that has gotten a lot of extra snaps this year. You can see him fighting the whole way, spinning his way back to the inside. And you're right, Vance Joseph, defense coordinator, has really had to plug a lot of different pieces in. And just when players were starting to emerge, guys like Zach Allen, injury there, Zayvon Collins had been playing well all year. And he's the reason, him being out, that Ben Neiman's in today. 18th year, Robbie Gold delivers for the 49ers. And of course, the young quarterback, Brock Purdy, as the point guard distributing to who needs it where, and they all seem to respond. And very unselfish. Debo Samuel is back, along with Elijah Mitchell, who has a couple of touchdowns. Let's show people how they how they all did blending together today. Yeah, and you see Ayuk on this first play. So many of those versatile pieces, these guys, like a Debo Samuel right there, sometimes catching the ball, sometimes running the ball out of the backfield. Kyle Juszczyk right there. You see him blocking sometimes, running the dives. Sometimes blocking in front, and then of course Christian McCaffrey. And again, this stresses a defense because they do all kinds of motions, they make all kinds of personnel changes, and then you got a guy like Kittle that's got that size, it's got that physicality. Ed, what a, it looked like a receiver with fingers in front. You know, he's, he's, again, he can he can be physical, he can be violent as a blocker, but nimble as a receiver. 49ers have never won 10 straight to finish the regular season. All the success in 49er history. Farrell Cooper bringing it back for the Cardinals in a strong return. Here comes a flag as he gets up near the 29 yard line. Holding during the return, number 45. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. First down, Arizona. Just because you go into the playoffs with a winning streak, these are the, we, we checked the last 25 years, these teams had won 10 straight to finish the regular season, but then look at their playoff result. Lost a divisional, lost a divisional, lost at a Super Bowl. Uh, only one, the 2003 Patriots went on to win a Super Bowl. So it's not as easy, I'm sure Kyle Shanahan will have them prepared as they take their streak into the playoffs a home game against they'll find out soon by tonight maybe well they will find out by the end of that Packer Lion game who they play as Dortch battles to get up he's got a first down near the 28 yard line yeah the Seahawks are trailing by three at home with the Rams at the moment a loss takes them out and then it's all up to Detroit or Green Bay the winner of that game at Lambeau to decide who gets in and if you're the two seed which the 49ers a win secures that then you would get that seven seed right here in your first playoff game. Of course you want that. And of course, if you're an Arizona Cardinal fan, you want to see this offense continue to operate, had the penalty before the drive even started. Keontae Ingram run out of bounds by Fred Warner. Yeah, it was interesting how Warner has led this team in tackles for so many years consecutively. Came in second on the team in tackles and Dre Greenlaw the leader of the team with 127 tackles before had a chance. He's played like a pro bowler Greenlaw, even though Fred Warner is in another one. Had a chance to finally supplant Warner as the leading tackler. But Warner back where he's used to being on this 49er team and one of the top tacklers today. Up around double digit tackles so far. Wow. Ball's out. He goes down. 49ers pointing. We'll wait for the official call. Jordan Willis knocked it out. And the 49ers have the football. Now this is going to be three turnovers. And David Blau, you know, time on task. You have to understand sometimes, even though Willis breaks free 
on this one. Sometimes you just got to keep moving when you get outside of that pocket. You see Willis coming off of this edge right here are going to be working against Beecham. The only offensive lineman that's played every snap this year. He just kind of gets his feet stuck in cement. Runs into Hernandez so he can't get over to continue the block. And Willis is able to get home and get the strip sack. Another takeaway. And there is the 38-year-old defensive coordinator <laughs> of the 49ers in his second year coming in after Robert Sala. And such a connection with his players and this defense. And he's another one of those guys, you know, not just what they are on the field, but what the guys are off the field. That's something that Tamiko Ryan's learned when he was at Alabama. Coach Shula was the head coach, but Joe Kynes was his linebacker coach, taught him that. Mike Shula, son of the great Don oh Shula. God. Jordan Mason has a hole. Gets to about the 23 yard line. Four minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Eagles are winning 19 to nothing. And once Kyle Shanahan is comfortable, you wonder now as a rookie, and again, this was just his fifth start, although he's got a dozen touchdown passes. Purdy, any playing time is good playing time, but you don't want to risk any kind of late injury as you get ready for that playoff game, assuming they have this game in control. Yeah, and that's the balancing act, right? And I think if you're Brock Purdy, if I was Brock Purdy going into the playoffs, give me as many snaps as I can get. Mason. He was signed as an undrafted free agent by the 49ers coming in here 30. He only had 32 carries over a five week stretch. He's played in all but one game and providing depth here against J.J. Watt on the Cardinals. J.J. Watt, you see the little head shake to the inside. Boy, he's always that high effort guy to combine that with his physical gifts. Get a dangerous player for a number of years and almost certain Hall of Famer. Yep. Uh, that's a I call him a walk-in Hall of Famer, <laughs> meaning the, the minute he's eligible, he can head right in. And Kittle has it for a first and goal at the five-yard line. They're gonna give that pressure look, and then they're gonna have one high safety. Kittle's gonna work from the inside here, working against Jalen Thompson, who's down in the box. It's the timing again, and this is something you talk about time on task time and time again quarterbacks want to be able to work on this At the top of my drop I got to be ready to make that throw got to be able to make that throw with the proper trajectory before the safety can get there he Did it once again right there Jordan Mason remains the back he gets the chance and Mason squeezes through and he's got a 49er touchdown. His second of the season. It's amazing. 15 different players have run the ball for the 49ers this season. That came in tied for most in the NFL. And with that offensive line and this creative play calling, they all seem to produce. You get Kyle Juszczyk. You know, a lot of times that fullback's going to lead the second level of the defense to the play. As you can see, sometimes you cut that thing back up inside, and the second level of the defense has vacated, kind of following the lead blocker, or what would normally be a lead blocker if it was going to be an ISO play, and you have some space back inside. But none of that matters if you aren't getting it done on the offensive line. And of course, 49ers with one of the best in the National Football League. We have a booth. See what what they're saying here. A booth review just to make sure before the extra point is kicked, because then it's official and it's history. Certainly looked like it was ruled a touchdown on the field. After a booth review, they reversed the call on the field as a touchdown. So with two minutes remaining, this is why. They said he didn't get in. It was so close. Oh, it was very close, but it looks like he extends the ball, but then he's pulling it back, which is sometimes a smart move. You don't want defenders knocking that thing away. This shows but, the knee, right? Yeah, the that knee's going to come down, and it's just not quite over the plane. 
when that knee touches. It's very close. Yeah, I think they could have left up. <laughs> hey, but those guys get graded on that. And okay. That's clear and convincing in one mind. You have to do it, right? Well, Steve, Jordan Mason gets graded too. Ooh, hurting will keep. And shoved backwards. Well, he didn't get that one earlier yeah, he, in the game either. He tried to get he tried to get the ball up and reach it across. That's third and goal. Yeah, again, you have to be so careful, and he's going to reach, but he does the right thing. He just reaches quickly because you don't lose it, the football. Well, you could, yeah, you don't want to get that thing knocked out. You don't have any support for that ball. You can't just keep that ball extended like that, hoping that it's crossed the plane. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, guys like Breeze and Brady have made that made that famous. See if Mason gets his chance, fake to him. Purdy throws end zone catch. She holds on, and that is another George Kittle touchdown. She had five touchdowns against Arizona in the last two games, and a three touchdown game for Purdy. There you go with that play action. Everybody lined up in the middle, expecting to run straight up the middle. And again, we talk about the versatility of the pieces and the route running of George Kittle. He does it again right there. Brock, P Brock Purdy able to make the completion. Well, they actually got looked like two touchdowns on that drive, but what was ruled was overturned, and it's another opportunity for Purdy to Kittle. And that connection is quick twice today. 38 to 13. When they ruled touchdown for Jordan Mason, he was in the end and said to Kittle, here, you spike it for me. Now watch. George kind of gets over, does that a little bit. Whoa. But then the, it was overturned, and then Kittle got a touchdown on the reception, and he clean that up a little bit yeah you, you like the development you right know, you, you gotta, gotta keep yeah, working on it yeah. right that's a big time that, that looks like a, some kind of that looks like got a wrestling move he's ready for that career after but he's got a lot of football left i mean in in, in the interview we, you know we're, we're we're talking to george kittle and christian mccaffrey at the same time and like he's just on the edge of his seat the whole time and this is clearly the way that george kittle just lives his life like he's constantly falling back in a chair and catching himself Arrow Cooper on the return for the Cardinals. And Cooper up across the 30 for the one time. Ram does an excellent job of giving them good field position. And Trace McSorley, who had stepped in after Colt McCoy, suffered a concussion. And that's what's keeping McCoy out. McSorley will now come in for David Blau, who may have been beat up a little bit the last few times. He looked like he was in pain over on the the sideline he's also had a rough day in terms of turnovers we'll see if McSorley can help this offense in a lopsided game and they're going to go under center here as well something we haven't seen much from them today Clement carries across the 35 fourth year from Penn State McSorley played in five games the last year he had one start in week 16 Played in the in the loss to the uh, 49ers this year, the one in Mexico, and out of the injury tent is David Blau. Hope that he's okay. Now this from State Farm. Josh Jones left tackle being checked on. He's the injured player on the field. As again, McSorley has come in for Blau, who had gone into the injury tent. And it's like Blau is headed toward the locker room. Jones is up. This is kind of emblematic of the Cardinal season when injury on the field and injury off the field. Cody Ford will will come in for Jones. Will they have 10 different offensive line combinations yeah, during 10, the year? It's 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 amazing. You know, I think they're third in the league right now with 11 designated starters on IR. It's just been that kind of season. and. When you stack up injuries, in particular one unit, one unit is important as an offensive line that could hinder so many of the things you're doing, or so many things that you're doing now, stacking up pretty much everywhere on the team. McSorley can run 
from the quarterback position. Throwing here. Well covered on the sideline and incomplete. The target was Marquise Brown when or on the coverage. Let's check in with Jen for more on the injuries. Yeah, Chris, dismal situation here on the Cardinal sideline. We've got Josh Jones in the injury tent, David Blau back in the locker room. J.J. Watt described the situation coming into the day, kind of like the movie 300. It feels like the Cardinals are 300 men trying to fight 10,000. They know it's an uphill battle. But again, what J.J. and other veterans are reminding this Cardinal squad, it's about pride. It's about finishing. It's about doing your job. So there are some players down here on the sideline trying to keep the Cardinal spirits up. They are try hard guys and they, they have battled through all of the injuries and underdog role they've been put in. There's McSorley on the run that we talked about. That's what he was doing most of when he first came in for Colt McCoy. Got the first down. And that will take us as the clock winds down to the end of the third quarter in Santa Clara, California. One quarter left in the great career of J.J. Watts. And one quarter left for this 49er team. The NFC West champs to nail down the two seed and head into the postseason on a 10 game win streak. Levi Stadium to start the fourth quarter. Jen Hale, Robert Smith, Chris Myers, and our crew. 49ers rolling here. It was a one point game through much of the first half. David Blau being evaluated. For a concussion, Trace McSorley is in at quarterback. Farrell Cooper lined up for the direct snap. Did that a few times in the first half. And trying to find a running room. It's the 22nd time the 49ers have won their division. Fifth title since the current version of the NFC West was formed in 2002 in the four-team format. And the big prize, they'll get at least one home game. Keontae Ingram comes in. In the postseason, they'll be gearing up. McSorley's throw. What a catch down to the 36 by A.J. Green. Boy, and what a block by Keontae Ingram on Hufanga, who's going to come in on a blitz. Take a look at this here. He's going to go ahead and chop him down. He realizes that McSorley's far enough away from him where he can go low like that and get him down. But what a throw by McSorley. Hitting green. Coming across there. Ingram the back. If the 49ers do hold this Cardinal team to under 35 points or fewer, it'll be the first time they've held the opposition under 300 points for a season since 2013, even with the additional 17th game. And they lead the NFL in the most important defensive stat, which is scoring, allowing just 16 and a half a game. Osa, maybe your defensive player of the year. Micah Parsons, maybe the other candidate. Yeah, he's within a sack of the 49er team record of Alden Smith, but he may not be able to get back out there. Ingram carries rookie from USC and will bring up a fourth down third excuse me third down need to get to the 26 yard line for a first down and the throw that we saw from McSorley in last throw over the middle to AJ Green impressive right there we saw the 49ers dial up a little pressure, bringing Hufunga in from the edge from that secondary position. We we'll see if they dial up the pressure right now. Got a long way to go to get this first down. They have a feeling maybe four down territory at this point. Timeout. Timeout. And fans really enjoy coming out to see it. Fox is proud to bring it to you on a third and ten. McSorley keeps slides before he could get the first down and now it is fourth down. They'll need about three or four here. 
depending on the spot. Boy, uh, <laughs> looks like a little mix up right there in the backfield too because McSorley was going for a little fake action there and Keontae Ingram was doing something completely different. So a little mixed signal, but it, as we speculated when it was third and 10, gonna go for it here on, on fourth down. Nothing to lose at this point. This is now the 40th fourth down attempt this season for the Cardinals. They've been behind much of the year. McSorley, Ingram, 49er defense with the stop. Lenore on the man on the spot, and the offense will take over. Lenore, Jimmy Ward right there. Of course, Lenore had not been starting all year long. Doing a great job here at the end of the year. Came to the stadium focus. He always spends time with fans, his family. <laughs> really proud of Koa, his new son, said that was his most memorable moment, having him at a, his game a couple of weeks ago, the last home game as a member of the Cardinals. All the kids wearing the 99 jersey and thinking of his family. Most players don't have the opportunity to say when their careers are going to be over. He understands it all ends for us at some, t some point, either in high school, college, or the pros. Jordan Mason carries and Josh Johnson has come in in relief. Let Brock Purdy start focusing on the next phase of his rookie career. Johnson came in the Tampa Bay game in week 14 was one out of two in that game. Eighth year at age 36 originally drafted by Tampa Bay. And you wonder if Jimmy Garoppolo who's out of the boot and kind of walking around throwing on his own at some point if he'll be back in the postseason, maybe a championship game health wise and the numbers on Brock Purdy didn't turn it over protects the ball very well a three touchdown game and uses as you've pointed out through the game Robert his talent around him so well Mason on a bounce outside you know I asked George Kittle about hey the Super Bowl run that you guys had with Garoppolo is this team are there and he said well two things stand out about this team uh, number one the depth we have we've dealt with injuries throughout the year like other teams that we've responded whether it's defense offense the quarterback situation right down to a rookie with Brock Purdy and then the other thing was he said that the physical game we play he's he, he threw this stat out he's very proud of it every team we've played the week <laughs> after we've done such a job of beating them down they have lost their game they're all in 14 oh and 15 I believe is the updated number that he rattled off and that was something that that he thought Related to the strength of the Super Bowl team and maybe this year's team as Mason Just gets across the 42 yard line. He's short of the first down Well certainly offensively and defensively you can just tell the physical nature of this team and they really enjoy it Right, like you can just hear yeah. the guys talking yeah. about yeah. that and the way that Especially they play. Especially Kittle, right? Oh, I mean, well, yeah. Kittle, but really all those guys. I mean, you see Debo, you, you know, you, you see all these receivers, Ayuk, all those guys are physical blockers, and of course the backs, you know, with Christian McCaffrey in there, another one of those versatile pieces to add to that offense. Again, makes it so hard on a defense trying to figure out what personnel they're going to be in and how they can play man when those guys split to the outside. Wisnowski's punt, fair catch, Farrell Cooper. This worked out so well for Shanahan on the 49ers being able to give certain players playing time, get the starters tuned up, and the history here, these are the most postseason wins. All time NFL and where the 49ers are, and they could run into the Packers possibly in the postseason. If they won the three pros, if they win the Super Bowl, then that will equal the New England Patriots on that board. Yeah, you know, everybody talks about their welcome to the NFL moment. Well, for me, it was sitting in my very first meeting after I got drafted by the Vikings, and I'm sitting in there with Roger Craig, who, of course, was part of so many of those great 49er teams. A.J. Green and a couple of 49ers bring him down. Yes, speaking of Roger Craig, it was it was fitting that Christian McCaffrey, right, first six years yeah, for running backs, yeah. broke that record of, of most receptions of the, as a 49er. And, you know, that, that's a move. We can talk more about the success of making the right moves for this team at the right time. And it seemed like a lot to ask uh, for a draft pick, you know, the, the amount of draft picks that were involved. But 
it was worth it, especially when somebody in your division was was going after him. And it's really he's fit so well with this 49er team. Ingram is in the backfield here on second down after a loss of three. As is caught inside the 15. Trey McBride. How about the future and much has been written contract extensions for the GM and head coach of Arizona prior to this season. Of course, Kyler Murray had his surgery in Dallas, but they're not sure, especially as active a runner as he is, the first major surgery in his young career, but when he can return to full strength, maybe a month or two into next season. I mean, that's a long way off. And rumblings about, will the Cardinals make some kind of organizational change? Up at the top on third and seven. McSorley gets away, completes Tyson Williams. His first game as a member of the Cardinals, but a flag is down. Holding offense, number 68. That penalty is declined, fourth down. Cardinals will be punting the ball away. We we did speak with Cliff Kingsbury about the situation and, and look, what's what's he gonna say? I have a contract, I'm trying to win a game and do the best I can with the people I have. Michael Bidwell, the owner, is very active. He said he talks to him often. They sit, they look at film together. Vance Joseph is involved in that as well. And they'll meet at the end of the year as they often do. And there is Michael Bidwell to assess the situation. And certainly makes it more difficult when you have a quarterback that you've given that extension to. You no, know, as you mentioned, Kaim has the extension. Kingsbury has the extension. Well, we've heard about some of the fractured relationship with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. You don't know how many of those things are true, and we just don't know what conversations are going on in the background. So, like everybody else, you really have to wait and see what actually happens. It's a major decision that... Michael Bidwell will have to make because if he does move on, obviously you have to pay the remaining portion of whatever the contract arrangement. But what kind of head coach comes in? Is it, is it somebody who's going to wait on Kyler Murray to help develop? You gave Kyler Murray a big time contract. Uh, that's a, that's what I'm saying. The player's not going anywhere, so it, it it leaves you making that decision from a position, understanding that that new person, maybe even new GM, has to know or have an idea of how they're going to address all of those issues that currently exist and it's not just about Kyler Murray and uh, you know his health and when he's going to be back but just so many areas of this team with the injuries with free agency how do you replace all those pieces at the same time meanwhile with Josh Johnson and Tyreon Davis Price has come in the rookie third rounder from LSU Carried a moment ago. They'd like him to hit the hole a little bit more quickly. They saw some talent from his LSU days. Ty Davis Price had 26 carries. I think we, in the last couple rounds of the playoffs last year, you had games that were either within six points or went into overtime, carried over into close games this season. Can't wait to see what we get out of the playoffs this year. On a second down six. Davis Price, and even though the last two Super Bowl winners they won in their home stadium had never happened before, Tampa Bay does it, and Tampa the Bucks win there, then the Rams win, and even though the Cardinals won't be winning the Super Bowl in Arizona, homegrown Arizona quarterback Brock <laughs> Purdy might he has that chance to not only do that but again be the first rookie to lead his team to a Super Bowl as he guides the 49ers forward. Eagles. Just three and a half left in that game. Ten point advantage for Philadelphia. They nail down the number one seed there. This win for the 49ers, provided they hang on here, gets the, the second seed in the NFC. Vikings won earlier today to get the third spot. Tampa Bay fourth. Ty Davis Price carries once again. Had an early season ankle injury, kind of put him behind on some things. Yeah, Di and Davis Price, you talk about, well, you need to get it down more downhill. Well, you also need to be able to fo follow your lineman, understand the blocking structure, the blocking scheme, and more often than not, you got one of those big boys pulling out in front of you. You want to stick with your big man, at least for a little while. You turn those things back up too soon. Don't give them an opportunity to get to the edge and get on one of those defenders. 
He's going to be running into a headache. Mitch Wisnowski to punt again. 49ers just anxious to protect the lead and run down the clock and get out of the building, get ready for the playoffs, find out who they're going to play and prepare for them. Another inside the 20. He's done it better than anybody in the NFL this season, the highest ratio, and he continues to do that. Christian McCaffrey fits the mold of a 49er. The Stanford star has found a home here. Exactly what he was doing at Stanford a number of years ago, and he really just does it all. You can see him going into motion, catches the ball out of the backfield. Of course, has the great vision, but there's the speed, there's the control, the hip flexibility that he has. And another thing I think goes unnoticed is, is his stride control because he get, chops those steps but then he gets into full stride to change speed. He is just something else. So much fun to watch him. He can do it all. Plays in a lot of pain. Don't talk to him about injuries. He'll play through that. He's had nagging injuries, but looks in top shape here. Limits his practice as Ingram carries after that 47-yard punt. And the most scrimmage yards per game in NFL history, look at the list of players here over the uh, Jim Brown. I mean, we're talking Hall of Famers, Walter Payton, and there's McCaffrey right in the thick of it. Boy, just amazing what, and, he, what he's been able to do. Yeah, he, he says, well, they're, they were kind of protecting him a little for the play. And he doesn't like it. He, he looks grumpy uh, over yeah, there. He's, he, uh, 79 yards he told, total, come on. He told Kyle Shanahan when he took him out the last Hey, you know, I could finish those games. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. He's like, I know, I know. I'm just trying to. Trade. We're going to need trade, trade all those yards for a ring, right? That's what all, everybody is That's after. Right. So that deal, just to go back over, was uh, October 20th from the Panthers. A, they, a, they gave him a second, a third, and a fourth in the 2023 draft, and then a fifth round in 2024. And and Kyle Shanahan said, "Hey, I knew you know I, I got this mention from our guys who do all this, right? John Lynch and company. <laughs> hey, we could get this guy. He goes, yeah, it sounds sounds good. You know, we worry about you know salary structure and that type of thing." And it's like, is that price a little high? And then heard like, oh, somebody else in the division may want to get this guy. He's like, let's go for it. And they're glad that they did because he's worth whatever they had to give up, but especially if they get the big prize at the end. On a third and three, Keontae Ingram fighting to get the first down. Huh? Well, the Cardinals also don't with Colt McCoy. I mean, if he's over the concussion, the, the veteran at age 36, would he, if Kyler Murray's not ready for the Cardinals next year, you want to bring him back here, is he going to be your starter? Do you really have a backup? Do you look for somebody else? Uh, I mean, and we're not exactly sure what the, what the quarterback market's going to be right now. I think it certainly has hurt the top end of the market, kind of what's happened with Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson this season and all the injuries we've seen. There's another interception thrown. George Odom, top special teams player for the 49ers, gets his opportunity and a, a dazzling return all the way inside the 15-yard line. Deshaun Gibson had two interceptions earlier. Just throws that ball a little bit too far behind. A.J. Green on that one doesn't lead him enough. Well, that's the opportunity for the interception. And you see Green moving to the right. You see him right in the middle of the screen right now. Just doesn't quite lead him enough. He is still out there battling, and that's the message he wanted to leave when he spoke to the team on, on Friday that value every snap, every opportunity. The time goes fast, and you got to give it your all. Be grateful for the chance to play in the NFL. We do it as kids. And he said in August, he's going to see finally what an August is like without football. Age 10, he's been. <laughs> until, until he goes yeah. and watches his brothers. <laughs> yeah, his brothers had a nice, uh, they sent out a nice little message watching. It, it, it really nice shoes with about thinking about his family, the cleats before the game. That just part of the, the send off. And there's. Three-time defensive player of the year, All-Pro, the active leader in Saxon. That's and this and this goes far beyond the field, which every player and people who've had a chance to meet him, Walter Payton 
NFL Man of the Year award winner in 2017. This was <laughs> before the game today. Ty Davis Price carries for the 49ers. Yeah, even uh, when he was in Houston, this is kind of what he's done. If <laughs> and he also worked so hard. Who was it? David Blau who told us, boy, here's this guy, his last game, and he's not mailing it. He's out there at 6 a.m. working hard. Preparing during the week he and his wife settle into he did say I asked him about coaching He said not at the college or NFL <laughs> level maybe high school, but uh, but broadcasting he said and I wouldn't I didn't say that earlier in my career, but I, I I think I'd like to at least be around the game I love football and some broadcasting but mostly spend time with family and watch and root for my brothers TJ and Derek final game for JJ Watt. J.J. White to his wife Kalia, son Koa watching there here in the stands at his final game. An emotional moment all the way around in the stadium. They showed and honored him on the big board, <laughs> the Jumbotron, and he took it all in. And he, <laughs> even the opposition appreciative of the kind of player in person he has been. Getting a standing ovation here. Walking. Yeah, this is nice from this 49er crowd. He, he said it's I'll try not to make it emotional. He said it'll probably hit me, you know, when, when I'm away and I'm supposed to be back out there playing. But there wasn't any doubt in his decision that this was the time. And he wanted to go out playing at a high level, as he said, and he has with a couple of sacks today and a lot more. Ty Davis Price carries. So we'll call this a Hall of Fame career. The quarterback hits. This is the total. For J.J. Watt, tackles for loss, 114 and a half sacks. A couple more today, and uh, it does not include the postseason. He's had quite a few there. 27 forced fumbles, and he loved the offensive stuff when he got a chance to get <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> they called that the megawatt plays. Lining him up in the backfield, going out and making a touchdown. He said one of his favorite games a few years back against Tennessee. He said it was like the best three minutes of football. Got a strip sack, fumble recovery, and then was able to score a touchdown on a reception. A couple minutes later. On a third and eight. Want to thank our crew throughout the year. Mark Butler, Bob Charlap and audio, Eric Norberg, Mike Moody, Jeff Wallace and camera graphics, Danny Chang, Don Walker, Rob Levy, video. Director Scott Katz, Avery Howe and Brooke Long, our production managers, James Petralka and Rick Odioso helping Robert and I here in the booth. Technical director Kyle Collins, Joe Lyons and Jay Johnson, our technical producer. Broadcast associates Sarah Shields, Connor O'Brien, Sunit Bakta, Sharag Nabaskar, our associate director, producer Eric Billigmeyer. Appreciate all of them for bringing you the pictures, the audio of the NFL throughout the season and a big moment for this 49er team 10 straight wins to finish the regular season just another check mark of the great history of the 49er franchise a first for them and Kyle Shanahan will take this team into the playoffs now they'll either play as the Eagles will get the bye the Giants or they would play Seattle or Detroit that wild card that final wild card team in the first round here the playoffs. Oh, and what a run it's been for them at the end of the year, and what a job Kyle Shanahan's done from Trey Lance going down with the injury to Jimmy Garoppolo going down with the injury and then plugging a rookie into this team. And again, I think they're kind of built uniquely structurally, offensively, and from a mentality point standpoint from an entire team just being physical. We're going to get you out to the Rams in Seattle. That game is tied, headed to overtime. But we're, we're going to come back right here to wrap things up for Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers. A 38-13 win, 13-4 record, 10 straight wins, division title, and heading into the playoffs where they will host a game. More from Santa Clara in just a moment.